of Edward Snowden. As we turn before break um, to Laura Poitras, uh, the person now known as The New York Times described her as, quote, the pivotal connection between the former government contractor Edward Snowden, the writers for The Guardian and The Washington Post, who published his leaked documents about government surveillance. Well, Laura Poitras <clears throat> had a byline on two of the key articles about the ongoing NSA revelation. She also filmed The Guardian interview with Edward Snowden in Hong Kong when he went public with his identity on June 6, shortly after. The Guardian and Washington Post published their stories based on the information he provided about the NSA. Well, Laura Poitras is an award winning filmmaker who's been discussing issues of privacy and state surveillance long before this. Her films include The Oath and My Country, My Country, The Oath about Guantanamo prisoners returning to Yemen after being released by the U.S. government. Last April, Juan Gonzalez and I spoke to Laura Poitras and asked her to describe the difficulty she faces with immigration officials here in the United States. States, even as a U.S. citizen, whenever she travels, comes in and out of the country. I've been stopped at the border since 2006, since I started working on this series of films looking at U.S. post 9 11. And so I've been, I've actually lost count to how many times I've been detained at the border, but it's I think around 40 times. And, um, four zero. Four zero, right. And on, on this particular trip, um, lately they've been actually sending someone from the Department of Homeland Security to question me uh, in the departing uh, city. So I was questioned in London about what I was doing. I told them I was a journalist and that, you know, my work is protected and that I wasn't going to discuss it. And then on this particular occasion, um, I landed at Newark Airport, and they, what they do when, when I'm flying, they do passport control inspection at the, at the gate. So they make everyone who's deplaning show their passport, and so that's how they... Well, they don't even wait for you to get to, to no, I don't immigration. No, I don't get into immigration. I get, I get the escorted treatment so from... they make everyone show their passport until they get to you. Right. And then they take you away. And the then plane. they take me away. And then I'm escorted first through immigration. And so th this has been going on, for, you know, I've been through this several times and, and kind of know how it goes. But what happened on this particular um, um, trip, which was, which was very disturbing, so. Just a few weeks ago. Yeah. So I was met by um, two agents at, at Newark. One of them was um, uh, Agent uh, Wassum. And I, when I, they met me, I took out my pen and paper to note their names and the time. And because I've always taken notes, so I have a record of the questions that I'm asked and how long I'm detained for, what's the focus of the interrogation, what they're doing to me. And on this occasion, I took out my pen, and I was ordered to put away my pen. And I didn't, and I continued to take notes. And I was ordered again to put away the pen, and I didn't. And then he threatened to handcuff me for not putting away my pen. And at that point, I put away my pen and then walked to immigration and took out my pen again to take notes, was ordered again to put away my pen, and then was taken into secondary screening and asked to speak to a supervisor, explained I was a journalist, explained that legal counsel has told me that I should be taking notes of my detention and interrogation, and then I was told that I couldn't take notes, that I was free to take notes after I was finished being questioned. Um, and Under then, the, the theory that, what, the, the pen was a, a weapon? Oh, yeah, oh, that's right. They said that my pen was a dangerous weapon. So that's what, that's Agent Lawson was who, who, who said that, that my, that my pen was a threat to them. And, and, you know, I mean, in terms of the context, you have to understand that I'm surrounded by um, uh, border agents who are all carrying guns, and I'm taking out a, a you know, a pen that, that they find threatening. Um, and so this was, you know, profoundly upsetting, and uh, and and then I was taken into I was taken directly into um, an interrogation room and questioned. I took out my pen again. I was ordered by another agent to put it away, um, and this went on for um, quite some time. And um, and I was told during this interrogation. I, I mean, I'm I'm always asserting my rights as a journalist to not reveal my work, my sources. Um, you did a film on Yemen, you did a film on Iraq. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so this detention started after I, I finished the first film in 2006, and which was about the occupation of Iraq. And uh, I was told that I was refusing to cooperate with an, with an investigation. And then he said, well, it was an investigation, it was questioning, but that I was refusing to cooperate. And then I asserted my rights, that actually asserting one's rights is not refusing to cooperate. And so this, this went on for quite some time. Um, 
and and that and, and I mean it's something that's been happening for a while and I, I've, I've talked about it publicly but also have been hesitant to because I I don't want to um, jeopardize the work that I do and well, they took we, your computer they I'm not on this trip no they've taken in, in your past, computer yeah on, on one occasion I took my computer they've taken your phone yeah. Uh, they, yeah on one occasion I was actually it was right after a few days after they I was actually uh, maybe f a week after Jacob's computer Democracy was Democracy Now contacted the Department of Homeland Security mm. for an explanation of why you were detained and interrogated at the airport on April 5th. We received a reply from Anthony Buki, uh, the public affairs specialist, that's B-U-C-C-I, uh, in New York City for U.S. Customs and Borders Protection. He emailed, quote, due to privacy laws, U.S. Customs and Border Protection is prohibited from discussing specific cases. He went on to write, quote, our dual mission is to facilitate travel in the United States while we secure our borders, our people, and our visitors from those that would do us harm, like terrorists and terrorist weapons, criminals, and contraband. He did not answer our additional questions. Well, I guess I should add journalists to that list. That was Laura Poitras, the award-winning journalist and filmmaker who had a byline on two of the key articles in the, New in the Washington Post and The Guardian about the ongoing NSA revelation. She also filmed The Guardian interview with Edward Snowden in Hong Kong when he went public with his identity June 6, shortly after the pieces uh, were published about the information he provided to the NSA. To hear and watch our full interview interview with Laura Poitras, along with NSA whistleblower William Vinnie and uh, computer expert, internet um, expert Jacob Applebaum, you can go to our website at democracynow.org. When we come back, turn.